Here is another one of our large building videos. We are building a 30 foot by 60 foot garage here, 30 foot by 60 foot. Six individual footings to support the posts that will be supporting the beams that will be holding up the roof. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the building apart like I normally do, except I won't be spending a lot of time taking the building apart like I normally do, but I will spend a little more time putting it back together. So here we have our two outside walls, 16 inch on center stud spacing. And make sure that you lay the studs out for shear panel or plywood sheathing if you're going to be using it. And in this video, I don't have any anchor bolts in the foundation. You will also need anchor bolts. And I say that, but in your area, you might not need anchor bolts. And we will be using 2x4s. You can use 2x6 or larger wall framing studs, especially if you need to install thicker insulation. And don't forget to lap the top framing plates at least four foot. And I really don't care if this is a building code in your area or not. It makes more sense to get a stronger lateral connection, side to side movement. If this thing starts pulling in one direction and you only have a one foot lap here, well, it won't take a rocket scientist to figure out that the wall could actually rip apart at the top plates. And this wall here will be the same as the one on the other side. And I would imagine the layout would be the same also. However, our front and our back wall will be different. I went ahead and I framed this for a larger opening. And I believe it's about 10 foot by 10 foot. And then I put a 32 inch wide door in the back. And you can always install a door over here or over here or anywhere along these walls using the same method. And of course our mid-span blocks and the pockets for our beams that will be supporting the roof. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to strap these two beams together, this beam to the beam that's gonna be running in this direction, along with strapping the top plates together. Put a strap wherever you have a break in the top plate framing, and that might include up here also. And of course, I'm using the word might because in your area, you might not need a strap. However, here in California, we need larger straps and of course, more of them. Now, I went ahead and shaped the top of the framing plate here, and you don't need to do that. I'm just kind of throwing out a few more things that you can use on a project like this or other projects if it will work for you. And of course, the reason for shaping this will be that the ridge will be sitting on top of it. And if you need to make the door wider, you're not gonna really have a problem with this design. Just simply move the post over a little bit. Next up, let's head over to our back door. And you can always add more doors or windows around the perimeter of the building if it's going to work better for you. And of course, a strap that we're using here to connect these two corners together to create a nice structural connection there. And in this case here, we needed to add an additional block underneath the top plates so that we could get additional nailing for the strap there. View of the back wall. Let's go ahead and install our post and beams. And don't forget, we are going to have a seat cut for our rafters here. The beam will need to stick up a little bit. And an example of how you can use a strap to connect the top plates together. You can always install two straps if you would like but one will probably do just fine. And I cannot provide you with the type of strap or the length of the strap. However, I can tell you that straps are used to connect things together like this beam here, when the post to beam connector might not provide you with enough structural strength. Don't forget you're going to be getting additional structural strength from the roof sheathing also in a situation like this. And of course our post to base connectors. And again, I like to have them up off of the concrete just a little bit or have the concrete even with the bottom of the connector. Let's go ahead and zoom out, take a look at the beams. Now I do not have the beams equally spaced. I believe I have a 16 foot, 16 foot, 16 foot, and about a 12 foot. You could always space the posts out equally if that's going to work better for your project. Let's go ahead and install our lower roof rafters. And I think I'm using two by six in this video. 
and we have about a 10 foot span here. You might need to use larger roof rafters if you're dealing with snow loads. And of course our blocking and our seat cuts. Don't forget that I do have other videos in this series you can watch. And I've already done a series for building a variety of different garages in another one of our playlists. So make sure that you check those videos out also. If you're interested in building something like this, this side right here or the left side is going to be the same as the right side if the beams are located in the same spot, the same distance away from the outside of the wall to the face of the beam or this side of the beam and the same on the other side. Let's go ahead and finish the roof framing with the top section where our rafters will be lapping and we will shape the tops of the blocks to provide us with some better nailing from the roof sheathing into these blocks. And I believe these roof rafters are spaced 24 inches on center. And of course the reason why I shaped the top of the wall framing there, you'll get a better idea over here. You can see where the shaped section of the ridge is sitting on top of the wall framing. Give you a better view of it there. We notched the ridge so that it could sit on top of the flat section in the wall framing. Next up, let's go ahead and add our outlookers and the fascia board. The outlookers will notch into the roof rafters sitting on top of the gable wall here. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to space this roof rafter accordingly so that you can get some structural support from the cantilever here. In other words, don't have a roof rafter six inches away from this one here or 10 inches away if that won't work for your cantilever. So the fascia board here is two by eight, I believe, along with our roof ridge. And let's go ahead and wrap this video up by installing our roof sheathing. And as always, if you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them in the comment area and I will answer them as soon as possible. And of course, this video would not be complete if I did not throw in that you might need to check with your local building authorities for lumber sizes, building hardware, and everything else you might need to frame and build a 30 foot by 60 foot building in your area.